How, how did that feel? <clears throat> Felt great. Um, honestly, I've been through a lot in my life. I had a lot of big wins. I've had a lot of upsets and um, or devastating losses, but um, that's probably one of the better moments in my, in my life, just because I was in such a dark hole, went through so much to get to this point, a year and a half layoff, um, being broke, you know what I mean? Uh, trying to figure out things and um, it, it feels good, man. I've been, uh, I've been really happy this week and it showed I had fun tonight. Why was Saturday? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hands just kind of <laughs> a little swollen. This is kind of went down, but so happens. Um, yeah, hard head, <laughs> third a lot, small gloves. Thumb, that's from the actual shot. You need to see a little fucking tooth mark or something right here. But um, just swollen, you know, typical wear and tear. A few bumps and bruises, but. Is it normal to get back into the gym that quickly? No. No, it's not normal at all. Kind of dependent on the fight. You know, we usually take a few weeks off, maybe a week. Like, we give ourselves, like, a customary week. I think it's just good in to, like, break a sweat, you know, just kind of shake the body out of, you know, soreness, toxins. And not to mention, I want to turn around and keep fighting. So, um, I just like to keep busy now, you know. My name is Michael Johnson, you know, fight name is Michael Amenez Johnson, and um, I'm a mixed martial artist in the UFC. I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. It's the Midwest of the United States, so think of, I guess, cornfields and, and maybe like flatland and like farmland and, you know, everything that, but it's um, a really nice um, environment, you know, very friendly family friendly, uh, family oriented, um, a lot of genuine people. You know, childhood was pretty um pretty pretty good you know I'm definitely a little hectic you know I'm, I lost my father at a young age and you know he had a, a heart attack when I was young so you know growing up my mother you know a single mother I'm you know raising three kids she didn't make it seem like it was difficult for her at all you know I had a great great you know childhood you know my mother did the best she could you know raised me to be you know the man I am today took care of you know my sister my brother and um was a, she was a great grandmother I mean, she's definitely made me into the man I am today and um you know, I couldn't have done this without her. The fight game has just kind of found me, I guess. Like I said, I was being kind of young and kind of getting into trouble sometime in places and um, being an athlete in sports and everything. So yeah, you know, I always had a sense of never really wanting to work for someone. You know, I wanted to be my own boss. I think I went in the gym not really knowing what was up and I kept my socks on, you know, going onto the mat and looked like a slumber party type thing. That was a funny experience um, to where, you know, a guy came to me and said, hey man, you wanna kinda take your socks off. You can't really train with socks on. So, got into that and then my first fight was kind of like a whirlwind. Really nervous, you know, um, even though I fought plenty of times before, you know, I still didn't know what to expect. The best came out of me and I won my fight in first round knockout and um, the rest is history. The UFC became a goal immediately. That's where I want to become. I want to become a world champion. I want to be the best fighter in the world. I started working towards that goal once I noticed. The first 10 years were pretty tough. You know, I stayed in and out of the gym, um, you know, working six o'clock in the morning, you know, and then going to wait tables and then going to classes during college and then turning around and going to bartend and, you know, followed by two or three training sessions was a lot on me to get to the UFC. And then it kind of dwindled down a little bit, but um, the training still intensified. The hours of the time it took for me, the time it consumed on me. I think a lot of dedication and sacrifice goes into being at the top level that you can be. Um, a lot of people don't see inside, you know, they don't see what we're going through, you know, outside of the gym, you know, life problems. Like I said, it's life. 
it's hard, you know, um, at times, you know, everybody goes through it. So as a fighter to juggle all these things is, is, and to go in and compete at a high level is, um, you know, very difficult. I just take life, you know, with a grain of salt. You know, it is what it is. I like to blame myself as opposed to blaming others. You know, I think it's easier to get over things and I just look at it how it is. Hey, I was on a four fight losing streak. Hey, I'm not doing as well. It's my fault, you know. It's my fault that these people are saying these things, you know. It's my fault that they look at me like this. You know, I can't blame it on them for seeing things how it is, you know. But, you know, they just didn't know the backstory. They don't know what it takes. Just you, me, and the odds. We stuck together, we two peas in a pod. Get out the bad hand, I'm there season the cards. We'll never be separated till we see in the gods. We've been low together, high forever. Long as we go together, we'll die whenever. Be a light, couldn't let the darkness try you ever. Truth in my word, you I lied to never. Man, four fight losing streak. Um, well, first financially, that's uh, very tough. You know, you're not getting. We fight on a show win basis. A lot of us, and we have to win to get double the money. So when you're getting half your paycheck, it it, it weighs on you, you know, a little bit. You're not really getting that money. And then also, I just took a, a year layoff. You know, um, three surgeries back to back. So financially, that hurts, and then mentally, it hurts as well because. Like I always think, like we claim to be these alpha males, you know, I got to this sport not ever thinking of a four or fight losing streak. I'm thinking of, you know, four or five fight winning streaks, becoming a, a world champion. That happens to you and you don't think that would, you know, so you kind of go through depression phase. Um, you start second guessing yourself a lot. You start doubting yourself. Were you really meant to do this? You know, um, are you meant to be a fighter, are you meant to be an athlete and, you know, continue this road and you almost kind of start looking for ways out or like, man, I should have made a plan B because now plan A is not working and now I'm really like stressing and everything's kind of crashing in on me. I need to figure out ways. Luckily, you know, the, um, the competitive side of me, the dedication side was like, no, like, screw this, like, we're going to continue this path. Um, you set out to be, you know, you set out to be a champion in this sport and, um, you know, this is what you're going to do. And um, just jump right back on that path and get you going. Think about, like, one loss, you know, self-doubt really doesn't creep in. Two losses, you're like, uh, maybe I got some bad luck. Three and four, you're like, ah, shit, maybe it's me. Maybe it's not a bad luck thing, you know, I'm doing something I need to fix. I talk a lot about going back to the basics, you know, humbling yourself, thinking you can grow more, you know, like, hey, like, you don't know everything. Like, you can grow more, you can learn more, you can be better. And, you know, that's what I had to take a step outside of myself and do. There was a lot of pressure to come in to be the best I could be. If I lose that fight, you know, I'm potentially cut from the UFC and now I have to really work my way back up to being like either back in the UFC or figure out another avenue of better making ends to meet, figure out a new job or, or what, you know, I, mean, I would definitely have a lot of search, find search and I would have to find myself a lot, you know, if a loss would have happened. So that definitely wasn't a thought in that.
I needed to go in there. And not only did I need to win, it needed to be a dominant win. You know, um, I think my opponent was very mismatched in that. Um, and I was coming in, like I said, I was fighting for my life in a sense because I have to provide now for myself. You know, I have to, you know, get these means of, um, to support because I did make this, you know, it became my job and my main source of income. So I need to be successful, you know, to get this money. Fear is good. I think fear, you know, makes you know you're alive, you know, and it brings those nerves into you and you have to learn how to cope and deal with it and live outside of those fears. Like I said, just take it for what it is. Like this could happen, but I have to try to do everything in my power for these things not to happen and be on the other side of them. You have to hold yourself accountable before anything else, because like I said, it starts with you and it ends with you. Be your own cheerleader, be your own supporter, you know, be your own critic, be your worst critic and, you know, kind of listen to yourself and not so much to others. You gotta be very strong mentally, like I said. It's almost a sense where you have to be okay with being hurt. You have to be okay with knowing that I might not make it out of here. You know, like it's a chance where something can go wrong. You know, you have to be okay with that. And normal people are gonna think I'm crazy when I say this, but it's peaceful to me. I'm comfortable there. And I think that's where people can resonate. You know, they find peace in where they're comfortable at. Even though we, as fighters, we don't want to be in comfortable situations because um, we'll make mistakes, but I, I was peaceful there, you know. It felt like, it's weird, it felt like nothing could hurt me in there. And this guy's just standing across from me, ready to hurt me, you know. So um, it, it's strange to have that feeling. So it was just joyful. My plan and my vision for my career is um, continue to enjoy this process, uh, enjoy the ride. Fighters in general, as I mean athletes, uh, we take a lot of things for granted. And when they're slowly taken away from you or it's that chance of it being taken away from you, you learn to appreciate it more. And uh, you know, that's my goal right now, is just to appreciate the life, appreciate what you know, God has given me up to this point, appreciate the fight game, uh, the small moments. And uh, just like I said, enjoy the process, you know, getting back up to the top and not focus on the win itself, you know, just focus on what it's going to take to become great. I, I'm here to prove myself wrong. I'm not here to prove anyone else wrong. I'm going against one person as opposed to a million. You know what I mean? I like those odds a little bit better. You know, so, yeah, it's just uh, myself and me in there. As long as I'm competing with myself and, you know, improving myself day in, day out, you know, that's good for me. I need to get back to loving the, loving the life, you know, loving the game, falling in love with it and um, being married to it, you know, until, until my wife comes along. That's the only thing that kept me going on a four fight losing streak is knowing and understanding, man, like, this is what great stories are made of. You know, guys that have come back from being completely out of it, come back from being, you know, buried underneath everything and four fight losing streaks and everybody counting you out. Like, like this is what these stories are made of. And hey, like, let's go back and, you know, be one of the greatest comebacks in, in sports history. That's the thing that's kept my mind going and motivated. And I mean, everybody wants that story. You know, they just don't want to deal with the losses and deal with the bullshit and the downfalls of getting to that story. I didn't want to deal with it. I've dealt with it. It's um, it, it happened, and you know now it's time to rewrite that story and become that great sports story. Four days is all that Michael Johnson had from fighting and winning his fight in UFC from, to doing that piece right there where he's back in the gym working out for his next fight. Like this is how hungry he is right now. He's got a, a point to prove. And I think it goes to show for everybody 
the fight is never over. And that means with like your journey to success, whatever it is, the fight is never over. And when you get a taste for that again, get yourself back in there, get rolling with it. Because he's had four days since he's fought, fought and he's already back in, in the ring training for his next fight. Like, it absolutely blew my mind. So thank you so much to Michael Johnson. Guys, if you want to support us, head over to mulliganbrothers.com where you can buy the hardest work in the room t-shirts. Linked down below. Pretty cool design. Hardest work in the room. Only wear it if you're the hardest work in the room. Michael Johnson needs about 20 of these because he is easily the hardest work in the room. Anyway, guys, go follow Michael Johnson on Instagram. Uh, link down below as well. And myself on Instagram, at Jordan Mulligan Brother. Have a blessed and productive day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.